he's just a hack. He's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. Welcome back to another episode of the Believe in NFL Draft Prospects podcast. I'm Joe DeLeon here with Ryan Roberts. We're moving on to the offensive tackle class, talking about a pretty underwhelming group. Ryan, this this uh, this group so far, and we're starting with the pairing of Blake Freeland from BYU and Anton Harrison from Oklahoma. Not the most talented two guys to start with. They've got traits, hmm. but and we're gonna get we're gonna get into this. I don't. Hopefully, that's not a tell on my opinions on both of them. Okay. But I think the fact that we're starting with these two guys is a clear, pretty clear indication that we're not gonna have as many players that were drafted this past draft in the first round. And it's going to be a little bit slim pickings at the top here. I mean, I mean, they need you need something in this class. You need a Paris Johnson from Ohio State to hit right. Like he's only played guard during his high state career, but you need him to hit at left tackle. You need a couple of these developmental guys to really take a step forward. I mean, it's possible, but I I think right now, I mean, I put on the on Twitter the other day, Joe. This has been the offensive tackle group so far, and I still have a couple guys I want to watch but it is probably the worst position group we've watched so far. Would you agree? Like, from Yeah. Well, I haven't head- watched nearly as many guys as, as you have, and I probably haven't right. gotten into the depth. But the fact that I know that Blake Freeland has been brought up as offensive tackle one, he was brought up as a, a, a highly draftable kid last year by some people. I mean, and I understand why some people say that. Yeah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share that reasoning later. But the fact that he's somebody who's brought up as offensive tackle one is pretty underwhelming for me. Well, I mean, Anton Harrison is also, I'm pretty sure he went first offensive tackle off the board in a pro football focus mock as well. So we're yeah. talking about two guys that have been talked about in that vein. Again, I mean, we're going to talk about Peter Skaronsky during this week. We're talking about Paris Johnson. There's a lot of guys who you could argue could be the first offensive tackle off the board, but that's scary because that means that nobody up top has separated themselves going into the year yet. By the way, spoiler alert, I've I've watched a little bit of Skaronsky. I started watching him this morning because I was woken up at 4.30 by the a-holes who live next to me that were <laughs> up all night. Um, yeah. But I started watching Skaronsky. I like Skaronsky after the 10 minutes oh, of watching no. him against Karloftis. You love offensive tackles with short arms, don't I, you? Well, we'll get to him. Maybe he's a guard. Maybe he's a guard. It's the Rashawn Slater uh, conundrum. Um, yeah, all yeah. Right. Let's, uh, let, let me get to the read really quick, and we'll start talking about these offensive tackles. Folks, if you want to have some fun betting, there's no football on right now. And if you're like me, you, you got to pull a little teeth to watch baseball. And the way that you're going to make it a little bit more entertaining is by putting some money on these games. So if you're going to do that, go to Bet Online. Our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source. For all of your betting needs and sports info, find all of the latest sports developments, including updated odds on the NBA and NHL playoffs, Major League Baseball, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering needs, including live betting in your favorite Vegas casino and poker games. It's super easy to get started, so head to their website today or use your mobile device to join and use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. So, Ryan, I kind of alluded to this uh, in regards to, to, to Blake Freeland. Blake Freeland is massive. He's, he's six foot eight, he's 310 pounds, mm-hmm. length for days. Yep. On paper, it looks good. And I understand why some people would put him at offensive, at offensive tackle one. I think somebody with a, a very limited understanding of the game of football, maybe not as much exposure to it. <laughs> Watch yourself. I do. Why do you like him? I do like him, yeah, but not as offensive tackle one. I, I mean, I don't think anybody's offensive tackle let, one right now. Let, it's let me yeah. rephrase. Let me rephrase. Okay, I think watching him because he he wins a lot of reps because he's long, and I think that for someone who's maybe not as familiar with the game as with as much in depth knowledge, she's a guy who wins a lot of reps because he's long. Like, oh, this guy's great. But if you pay attention to some of the the minor issues with his game, I think it's it makes sense to not immediately peg him as OT1. I mean, he moves well for a guy of that length. Mm-hmm. I have problems with his build, and it affects some of his other traits because his, his lower half is just really – it's it's kind of thin to me, and I think that impacts his, his flexibility, his ability to to sink into his hips a little bit more. You, do, you disagree? Huh. I, I, I My biggest quarrel with Blake Freeland mm-hmm. is – 
there's some raw from a technical perspective that I'm sure we'll talk about a little yes. bit, but it's the core strength is more yes. the issue that I have. He's not. And I think that this is where the background stuff is something to, to talk about for a second, right? Cause he is a former high school quarterback turned tight end. He had never played offensive line until he got at BYU. I mean, he should have been BYU at like 255, 260 pounds. Like he was a smaller dude, but he was a, also a, really accomplished th track thrower um at that level right he had a six he was a 60 plus foot shot putter 160 plus disc he's an 180 plus javelin thrower so i see flexibility on film i see actually really good flexibility on film and i think the foot quickness is good in that regard as well for, for a guy his size he can he size. right that that was something that was noticeable too is that he can move yeah. his feet well for a guy that's that that large my, my biggest thing with him is that he is just not strong enough right now. Yes. Right. Like I think that that's my main issue is that the core strength is not NFL caliber right now. Mm -hmm. But again, we're heading into, I mean, he was only in his third year last year after making a transition. It was his first full year as a starter. Mm -hmm. So I am hopeful for Blake Freeling Freeland. Cause I think that there is an unlock unlocked ability from an athleticism perspective. If he's able to, get stronger and, and carry more weight through his core and more power through his core. I think that there's upside there. He, I, I think I said this to you, Joe, before he reminds me so much of Colton Miller when he was coming out of UCLA, like so much. And Colton Miller had the same things, man, just like not great core strength, but like good athlete, massive human, all those types of things. And I was very low on Colton Miller. I missed on him. He was a player I missed on. And I, there's so many parallels. I see with Blake Freeland that are, Similar, I think, to a Colt Miller. So I just, I don't know. I think that the things that are lacking in his game right now are fixable, which is why I think I have hope for him. Right. So like, that's kind of what I'm getting at here. Part, part of what I was trying to say earlier is that, again, the, the big thing is you see him win a lot of reps against some weaker opponents. And it's very easy for somebody who's not fully familiar with with evaluating an offensive lineman, you can't just bank on like, wow, he's winning all these reps. He's going to be so dominant. Those issues that you see, despite him winning, are going to translate to the next level. I don't think, I don't not think that he's flexible, but, and it's always an issue with, with tall tackles. And then on top of what you're talking about, a guy who hasn't played the position that long, he plays really freaking high. That like, that's, that's what bugged the hell out of me. Like I need to see him sink more, man. Like he, he, he leads with his head and kind of leans a little bit when he run blocks. Th those are yep. his bad reps. Mm -hmm. I don't mind the angles that he takes. It's just he's like leaning and he's not using his full strength. And I don't get like a ton of like leg drive from him. I think his base could be better because like he's he looks really top heavy. He looks like a kid who who put on a lot of weight to get up 300 pounds. And mm -hmm. when you do that, typically you put on a lot of fat on your upper body. I, I, same thing happened to me when I was trying to get up to 230. He right. just needs I think he needs more bulk in his legs. And he's he's big enough where he could probably be three thirty, six foot eight. So I, I want some. He needs a like as Mike Mayock used to say. He needs a little bit more of a bubble butt. Sand in his pants. Sand in his pants was another Mayock one. I, <laughs> I agree. I agree with you there, Joe. He plays very high. I don't see. I think that the our only difference is that I don't think it's a flexibility issue. I think it's a lack of technique issue, right? Because like there's some guys. Okay that play high, but it's not necessarily because they're not flexible and they don't have fluidity yeah. and flexibility through their hips. It's just, that's just how they kind of have gotten by. Like you said, things are easy for break Blake Freeland right now in pass protection. Like the dude does not have to do much to win reps, right? Like it's not hard for him, but I've seen reps where redirecting against inside moves and counters and all that type of stuff where he's able to sink and then redirect and you see the foot quickness there. That's why I think that that stuff is correctable. I don't think it's a, laps in flexibility i think it's more a lapse in technical side of the game yeah making that delineation between the two is is probably one of the trickier things it's with tough. figuring out it with yeah. figuring out tackles because you don't know until you see them actually sink it's um fair. but i i know that him watching a mirror like he moves really well for a guy that size like that that ability to mirror at you know at that size and to move and redirect is nice the one other yeah. like slight issue i had with him and again, like he wins a lot of reps because the length is there. And if you can get him to sink a little bit better, I think he could be even more dominant. Yep. But and this might be because of the, the, the light lower half part. He's on the ground a lot. Did you notice that? Like I noticed that he's he's on the ground. Like he falls over a lot. I, I think one thing that I think is a big negative on him too, and this is to your point, 
is I think that there is a, I want to phrase this correctly. He's a little of a bit of a passive run blocker. Okay. So I think that he's yeah. more of a, he's more of a positional blocker, right? Like he's going to get his body in the right, in the right spots, but he's not really a drive you off the football type of dude. Right. And I think that that's where you see him lunge a little bit. And that's where the balance issues can happen. I don't think the balance issues are there in pass protection. I think it's more of like a run blocking thing. Like he just gets overextended because I think that he's, I'm going to get to the right spot. I'm going to stop my feet type of thing. I'm just going to get in the right, you know, in, in the way of people rather than drive people off the ball. So I, I think again, that's, it's fixable. I just, I don't know if he's ever going to be a physically dominating run blocker. He's much more, I'm a good athlete. I'm going to get to my spot. I'm going to be in the right position type of blocker positional. So let me ask you this about Freeland. If, if he stays like he is right now, where, yep. where are you taking him? Day two player, day two player. I, I would say maybe second, mid second type of guy. Cause it, it, right now he's not a starting caliber offensive tackle. I like him right now in the summer because I think there is a clear projection to him being a much better player. And I think there's a projection to him being a, I don't want to say premier pass blocker, but like a plus pass blocker at the next level. I think he has left tackle traits at the next level. So right now I think he's a day two football player, but I do think if he is able to improve on some of these habits, I do think he's got first round potential. I do. It's just, it's not there right now. Right. So. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are going to hop in the comments and say that I hate Blake Freeland because, you know, we got a lot of those comments when I said I wasn't a big fan of Jackson Smith and Jigba, but I still had him at the top of the class. I, I like Blake, Blake Freeland, and he has mm -hmm. literally every single trait that you want physically for an offensive tackle. But I agree with you. This is a day two pick for me right now. But what is probably going to happen, because as we're talking about this offensive tackle class, this offensive line class is not that strong except for the center position. So a guy like Blake Freeland, Dan, his name is a little bit of a tongue twister. Blake Freeland is mm -hmm. going to be overdrafted no matter how he finishes because right. of the size. Same thing happened with Colton Miller. I think a lot of people weren't necessarily expecting Colton Miller to be drafted as highly as he was. Nobody really thought that was going to happen. I think most people said he was a day two pick, but he was so freaking massive. He was nimble. And if he banked on it, those traits, he was going to turn out good, which did end up happening. And I think... With that direct comparison that you're making here with with um, with with Colton Miller, I, I think yeah. another team's going to say, "Hey, I want a guy like this. We need an offensive tackle. We're not that fans that much of fans of the other guys in the class. Let's pull the trigger on him." Yeah, it's it's all about traits at offensive tackle for me, man. There's unteachables, which are going to be the length, the body type, the athleticism, and then you're going to hope that with better coaching at the next level you unlock that length, you unlock that athleticism. Cause I think it's all there to your point. Right. So yes, I am. And admittedly, like there's bias to scouting. I am telling you all right now, I am betting more on Blake Freeland and his upside because I missed on Colt Miller. I'm telling you that I'm not hiding from that fact. I have missed on this type in the past. So I think that it's projectable to the next level. So yeah, I like Freeland. I think that he has all the talents, to be the first offensive tackle off the board in this group, I think that it's there. It's just, I mean, I don't know if there's any offensive tackle I've watched so far where I would be willing to take them in the top half of the first round. Like, there's mm. just, it's a lot of developmental type players. It's a lot of projection, but that's why we're here in summer scouting. So I feel like it's going to be a lot like that, that Garrett Bowles year, but uh, another guy who Garrett Bowles ended up being a pretty good player too. And he was similar. He was, he yeah, was but he was a tricky, tricky. Utah prospect though because he's yeah. much older and, yeah. and it's a lot of like okay do we do we hope this works out but Anton Harrison though the Oklahoma left tackle has had a very very nice career much younger than Blake Freeland because not having to deal with the you know the mission aspect of things or I, I don't know well, what's the I, age I, I, difference I, I, actually I, I want to cut you off there for yeah a am I wrong minute, actually yes you are Blake Freeland oh. was born Rick Bruin was born in 2001. He did not go into Mormon mission. So oh, he, he is, did not. Okay. He did not. He is only 21 years old right now. I'm looking through. Never mind. The, I'm looking through the uh, the database to see if we had. We, You know what we need to do? We need to get Jesse on, Jesse Fritch, and we need to have him sit in the background and not talk. But when one of us makes a slight mistake on like a date of birth or like yes. where they went to high school. He needs to uh -huh. just chime in and that's all he's going to say. <laughs>
<laughs> that's really funny. I, I I think he would probably enjoy that weirdly, but yes. yes. Uh, so 2001 Blake Freeland. So he is 21 years old. He'll be 22 during the draft. If he comes out next year, cause he does have the extra year with the COVID mm-hmm. stuff. Um, it, we do not have a year for Anton Harrison. On Anton Harrison but I, yet, I think, so. isn't he a true junior? He's like a, a true red, junior. Yeah. So, he, okay, so junior. I'm, yep. I'm willing to bet that he's probably 20, 20, uh, 20 going on 21, but talking yeah. on him as a player, I, I don't, I'm not saying I, I like him better than I liked Freeland, but I noticed more play strength and much more aggression I'm always going to lean slightly away from guys that aren't naturally aggressive playing offensive line. But Aaron, Anton Harrison, I got a little bit more of that. I like the play yeah. strength, though. The technique yeah. is all over the place. The technique is a bit sloppy at times, grabbing guys on the outside as a run blocker and a pass blocker. Don't know mm-hmm. how he didn't get called for holding more. But I, I think that the that aggression, that play strength, is something that can be tapped into if you can clean that stuff up. Yeah, he's he's really interesting player, man, because he is there's some natural power to him, right? Like there's easy displacement power at points. I think that his technique needs a whole lot of work. And I don't know if you heard this, Joe. Ready? So I, I'm gonna make a statement. If the, I hope this makes sense to people out there, I think he's a good athlete all the rounds. I wouldn't call him a great athlete, but I think he's a solid to good athlete in all regards from a redirection, linear ability, all that type of stuff. But I think the game's moving very fast for him right now. Mm. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. it, 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 because it sounds weird because it's like you're telling me that he's fleet of foot, but also he, it, games, everything's moving fast around him, right? But like, I think that that's, I think he rushes things a little bit. I don't think there's patience to how he plays the game right now. And I think his aiming points are off because I just think that everything's just kind of moving too quickly around him right now. And I think we need to remember that last year was his first full year of playing time, full year starters. There is, traits there for sure i'm just i don't know man he seems more like a 2024 guy to me than a 2023 guy like i don't unless he takes a massive Mm. step but the tools are certainly there and i think there is some natural power i just think everything around him is just moving a little bit fast right now for harrison yeah the the rawness was a lot more noticeable blake freeland was further along, but still very, very raw. And you see some correctable technique issues. There is a lot to correct here with Anton Harrison, but when you see him win, man, does he win? Like, it's not like a, just like he's in the right position. He's got guys latched up on the inside of their pads. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's bench pressing them off of him. He's in a nice position and he's really dominating that rep, not only physically, but technically to an extent, but there's a lot of other reps where he, like you're saying, play speed looks a little bit lost. There was uh, against Iowa state. I'm blanking mm-hmm. on the kid's name, the edge rusher number nine. McDonald. McDonald's. Yeah, he's got some length. Uh, yeah, I, I looked him up after. He's got some length, but he we're, we're gonna we're gonna watch him edge beak, man. Will McDonald's uh, got some goods. Yep. I, I had a feeling that we would because he he was there was one play he made a couple times he spun around him. He 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 blew past him and um and had a strip sack on Caleb Williams. Harrison ended up picking up a ball and had a nice rush on that play, which was fun to watch. But those instances going against McDonald you saw those bad reps where out of position gets a little bit frustrated. Things are moving a little bit too quick for him. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a really tough one, man. Cause I think his foot quickness is fine, right? Like I, I see him reach from the backside and, and be able to get in good positions, but it's just, it's, it's a heavy projection right now. I mean, it really is. He's, he's a guy that I think aiming points are bad in the passing game. I don't think his, his hand placement is great just overall in a general sense. Everything just needs a little bit of work. I think there's untapped potential. But again, I think it's more people are projecting this guy to maybe be the first offensive tackle off the board. And I think that's kind of ruining it for me a little bit. I would normally just be like, wow, this is a really intriguing early day two player that I think can be a riser. But he's just not there right now. But I I think it's just kind of hurting it a little bit. Can can we talk about something, though, Joe, with Anton Harrison? Yes, go for it. There is zero chance my guy is six foot six, like he's listed, right? Oh, like no, zero. he is six chance. four. He is yeah, six, six four. four and a half. Like, yeah. yeah, I think the length's gonna be fine. Like, I'm right. sure he's like right around 34 inch arms, and he's probably six four and a half. And it's a pretty decent frame in that sense, but like, there is no chance my guy is six foot six. Like, it, it's also, chance. it's funny going from watching Freeland and then flipping on Anton Harrison. I'm like, wow, this guy's a lot stumpier considering he's only two inches shorter. No, he's. He's six foot four. He's kind of got that like Trent Williams kind of, kind of yeah. build to him. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm mean, obviously we're not we're not comparing him to Trent Williams. No, but no, but similar body build. type, body yeah. type. Yeah, no, that's a good well, one, Joe. Little, little, little top yeah. heavy, long arms. No, yeah, you know, nice athlete. But, like, but he's got, but he's got a stumpy lower half, man. Like right. he's just, he's yeah. like, he's built well down low, comparative to Blake Freeland, who's very thin lower half, like you kind of stated before. To to wrap our thoughts here on on Anton Harrison and the show, I, I th- and you kind of said where you would take him. I think if we get some improvements on the technique and maybe coming into this the second full year as a starter, I, I would take him somewhere on day two. I, you can't sell me on him as a first-round prospect for all those inconsistencies. Good athlete. Really, really nice athlete. But the technique stuff needs to be cleaned up before I can buy in on, on a guy like that. I mean, you're talking about uh, biases. Like I think of a, a guy like Eric Flowers, who the Giants took, who not no. similar in terms of a player, but just like someone who was super raw. I am yeah. not a fan of drafting raw tackles. I'm just not. Yeah, I, I think I, I th- Eric Flowers was a difficult one because he was just so physically dominant in college, but like he was a lunger, he was a holder, and you you yeah. could just see that stuff, right? Like he wasn't technically refined at all. I think Freeland's a much more smooth player as an athlete, yes, right? Like yes. I thought that's Flowers- not a direct comparison for our listeners, yeah, no, no, by the way. no, no. I'm just saying Flowers <laughs> you was know that. more explosive compared to Freeland being more smooth right like i think there's just a little bit difference there i comparing these two players i like that we started here because these are probably the developmental guys in this class right like they they could be risers to be um for sure even though there's seems like there are a lot of them this year i like freeland a little more than harrison like i really do i i'd be willing to bank on freeland right now yes. somewhere early second rounds i think harrison's more of a late two early three type of player for yes. me right now because i think there's a little more I think there's a more a little more ways to go. I think from a technical perspective and from a physical perspective, Harrison needs growth in both areas. I think really Freeland just needs growth in one area, right? Like I just think he needs to get physically stronger. So we'll see what happens. But either way, two interesting players. They should not be in the offensive tackle one conversation yet, but a lot of growth potential for both guys. Folks, that's going to be it from us. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening. At Joe DeLeon, at Rise and Draft, at NFL Prospects Pod. We'll talk to you later.